How long are you going to wait before you demand the best for yourself? Today, we're going to talk about the most important things you need to set and reach your personal and business goals. This requires self-discipline to be responsible for our actions, attention to only think about things we can control, and endurance to get through tough situations. Stoicism, an old philosophy, is interesting because it is based on these same ideas. Let's look at the Stoic runner Chrysippus as an example. As written by Diogenes Laertes in Lives of Eminent Philosophers, Chrysippus would set a running goal every day, try to beat it, and then set a new, better goal. This never-ending drive to get better is what makes both sports and Stoics great. Our guide was made to help you on this path of always getting better. It's based on the tried and true knowledge of Stoicism and is meant to help you set and meet your goals. In your quest for personal development and success, this thorough guide is meant to be a resource you consult repeatedly. Let's start. How do you set goals? Marcus Aurelius said, if you don't have a consistent goal in life, you can't live it in a consistent way. This wise saying shows how important it is to have clear, consistent goals in life. Epictetus, another great Stoic philosopher, agreed, First say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. In this case, Marcus Aurelius is a good example to follow. He was taken in by Emperor Hadrian when he was young and trained to be Emperor of Rome. He accepted the job after reading Epictetus's writings. Surprisingly, Marcus Aurelius became a great example of ethics and honesty, while many kings' morals changed when they had a lot of power. Because they are widely called meditations, his personal works show how he makes decisions. Marcus set a clear goal for himself, to be the exact opposite of these traits. He saw how power can lead to corruption and lying, and how people from wealthy homes are often mean. He wrote about how to stay simple, good, clean, serious, and humble. He also talked about how important it is to be fair, pious, kind, and do your job. It was his personal promise not to let the trappings of power change him or make him do bad things. Another Stoic philosopher, Seneca, said, If one does not know to which port one is sailing, no wind is favorable. This fits with Marcus's way of thinking. He set his goal, his moral direction, and then worked hard to reach it. His journey, which is told in Meditations, shows that he worked hard to become the person he wanted to be. In this way, goals for Stoics are like a guide star. They point us in the right direction without pushing us. They are the first and most important part of Epictetus's plan for a good life, saying what we want to be. This brings us to the next step. Once you've set your goal and made your plans clear, you need to figure out what you need to do to achieve that state. It's not enough to just want to reach a goal. You have to be committed to a road of personal growth and moral behavior. It is a colorful and wise comparison for Seneca to say that setting goals is like being a painter. Goals reflect the likeness we hope to achieve in our lives, just as a painter imagines the end picture they want to make. Seneca says that these goals are our chief purpose. Once we know what we want to achieve, we need to focus on the plan, like a painter who thinks about the paints and methods they will need to make their idea come true. Which paints and brushes should I use? What skills do you need? At this stage, we organize the things we need to get to our goal. This comparison brings out a basic Stoic idea. There is a difference between results and acts. Stoics say that you should focus on the method rather than the end result. For a painter, it's not just about the finished picture, but also about each brush stroke. In the same way, in our efforts, instead of focusing on becoming an author, try giving writing an hour of your time every day. Focus on making each practice session better instead of worrying too much about winning a title. Instead of just wanting to run a marathon, make a promise to run every day and eat well. Goals are very important because they give us direction and focus. 
making sure that the things we do every day are meaningful and in line with our bigger goals. They help us focus on the exact actions and plans we need to take to achieve our goal. Going back to Epictetus's method, goals help us figure out what steps we need to take to become or do what we've decided to be or do. To use Seneca's comparison again, it's important to have a clear vision and a well-thought-out plan, but we really make progress when we start painting or working toward our goals. Now that you know how the Stoics thought about setting goals, let's look at some of the best ways they came up with to do it. Why setting goals is important. Make sure that everything you do is geared toward that one goal. Seneca said, it's not doing things that bothers people, but having wrong ideas about things that drives them crazy. All the noise and activity in modern life makes it easy to lose sight of our real way. The steady flow of emails, the changing needs of daily life, and the widespread impact of social trends can easily take our attention away from what we're supposed to be doing. This is where the real value of setting goals becomes clear. Someone who wants to live a worthwhile life, be good, and do good, must have clear, well-defined goals. They guide and center us in the middle of life's chaos, like a North Star. When outside forces or a lack of motivation throw us off track, these goals help us re-evaluate our direction and stay on track. Still, someone might wonder, what is the real point of setting goals? Or, does setting goals really lead to good results? This kind of doubt is reasonable since life is complicated and unpredictable. To answer these questions, let's look at three strong reasons from Stoic philosophy that show how important it is to set goals. Getting a sense of direction and purpose. Stoicism stresses life with meaning and purpose. Setting goals keeps us from being swept along by life's currents without a clear direction for our efforts and ambitions. They act as lighthouses, guiding us toward personal success and happiness, improving your own discipline and focus. Setting goals requires a level of discipline and focus that are at the heart of Stoic ideas. By writing down what we want to achieve, we can make sure that our actions and choices are in line with those goals, which leads to a more organized way of life. To stay on track, even when things are chaotic and unclear, we need to keep our minds on the task at hand. Goals aren't just goals to achieve, they're also chances for self-reflection and growth. They push us to think about our ideals, goals and skills, which helps us learn more about ourselves. We learn, adapt and change as we work toward our goals, which is in line with the Stoic ideal of always getting better. Setting goals is an important part of living a well-organized, meaningful life. It's not just a way to get things done, it's an important part of a moral way of life. By setting clear goals, we can go through life with more clarity, purpose and strength, and we can stay true to our values and goals even when things get hard. 1. Having clear goals helps you stay on track. Setting goals is a well-known way to get clear and focused in many different theories and strategic methods. The 48 Laws of Power says in Law 29, plan everything out to the end. Robert Greene says that picturing the end result will help you deal with problems more easily and know when it's time to surrender your efforts. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People also says to start with the end in mind, which shows how important it is to plan ahead in both personal and business life. Stoicism also knows how dangerous it is to keep going without a clear goal. Stoics know that not having clear goals causes inner turmoil and chaos in one's life's efforts. When you don't have a clear goal, the choices you make every day are random and lack direction, which makes it easy to get off track. It is important to know where you want to go, not only to meet your goals, but also to stay sane in a world full of distractions. 2. Setting goals helps you see what's good and bad. 
Having clear goals is important for being able to tell the difference between situations that are good and ones that are bad. A lot of the time, people have strong ideas about what is good or bad in life, but these views are meaningless without a clear path. Seneca's comparison of using a measure to fix something that is crooked is a good example of how important goals are for judging the events of life. If you don't have a clear goal, your ideas about success or failures are just guesses. Setting goals gives you a standard by which to judge the things that happen in your life, which helps you decide how to react to them. Not only does knowing your location give you a sense of direction, but it also helps you decide what actions will help you reach your long-term goals. 3. Goals can help you stop putting things off. Putting things off is often a sign of not knowing what to do or not having a clear plan. This can be frightening, like an army without a boss facing chaos. On the other hand, having a plan, even if it's not perfect, can give you a feeling of direction and purpose. Bill Walsh, the coach who won the Super Bowl, showed this by planning the first plays of his games ahead of time. Because he had practiced, he went into the game with a clear head, not affected by early losses or shocks. This idea is shared by many of the most important people in history, in many different areas. By making clear goals, they were able to keep life from getting out of hand and avoid putting things off. Deliberation and uncertainty are good for procrastination. It thrives in situations where people aren't sure what to do next or how to organize their tasks. According to Seneca and the Stoics, a life without clear goals is like being tortured because you have to fight decision fatigue and loss of motivation all the time. On the other hand, having clear goals makes things easier and more organized, which speeds up the process of making decisions and taking action. Setting goals gives you order and clarity, which stops you from putting things off. This lets you deal with life's problems in a more focused and useful way. How to make goals like a Stoic. When it comes to setting goals, the Stoics give us three important ideas. Let's get right to them. 1. Establish objectives. You can control. You should never stress out over things you can't change. Marcus Aurelius. In Stoic philosophy, telling the difference between what we can change and what we can't change is the most important thing we can do. Things we can change and things we can't. For Epictetus, a slave who became a philosophy teacher, this was our chief task in life. He said it was to identify and separate matters so that I can clearly say to myself which are externals not under my control and which have to do with the choices I actually control. The Stoics would say that the most important thing when making goals is to make sure that the goals are ones that you can achieve. It makes no sense at all. People who are very successful in life, who get a lot done, and who are their fields, don't care that much about winning. They talk about it less, for sure. How is that possible? They want something more important than that. They want what Posidonius told the great Roman general Pompey in Lives of the Stoics. They want to be best, not be the best. They want to master themselves. They want to reach their full ability. Marcus Aurelius wasn't making comparisons between his achievements as emperor and those of other great leaders, but he did plan to win the fights he had to fight. He had a bigger goal in mind. He meant to do good, to behave well, to be in charge of himself, to live up to the man that philosophy tried to make him. It's nice to win, like being rich. Even though it's nice, you can't change it every day. You can choose to show up, put in your best effort, follow your training, stay true to your values, and follow your calling. That's great if it leads to success on the field. In fact, it almost always does. If that leads to job success, that's great. And again, it generally does. 2. Don't make too many plans. Ask yourself all the time, should I do this? Livius Marcus. 
People in the past had big goals and had trouble putting them in order of importance, just like people do today. Someone named Seneca said it was one of the hardest things to do in life. We don't want to be that person who can't keep still. It's not work that makes us want to be busy. It's just the mind of someone who is hungry. But we don't want to be the type of person who is always sitting still either. Putting an end to all motion as a bother is not true rest, he wrote. That kind of repose is slackness and inertia. Seneca said that the job of a philosopher is to find the best balance between these two impulses. It has to do with working and resting, not avoiding work and working. Marcus Aurelius once said that getting rid of the unnecessary helps you do the important things better. This is why we should all do the following practice every day. You have a lot to handle, so write it all down. Cut it down to a few. Make a promise to get A's in those few things instead of B's and C's in most of them. You should back out of something you never should have committed to in the first place. Pay attention to what's really important. These five steps will help you find true peace and success. 3. Make sure those are your goals. Stop letting different things pull you in different directions. But watch out for the other kind of misunderstanding as well. Many people work hard their whole lives, but don't have a goal in mind. They waste their time, even when they are working hard. Marcus Aurelius it can be misleading to hear Stoics say they don't care about praise or benefits from other people. Marcus says that fame doesn't mean anything. Being successful or wealthy is something we can't control, so Seneca says we shouldn't value it. People tell you not to care about what other people want and not to get caught up in pointless competition. Does this mean the Stoic doesn't try? that the Stoic is content with whatever life throws at them and doesn't care about getting better or growing? Of course not. The Stoic is still very driven, but they look at their own record instead of the scorecards of other people. You will fail if you try to beat other people. But when you compete with yourself to get better, you are in charge of that battle. You can win it. How to really reach your goals. 1. Make it real. Epictetus said, We need to train hard over the winter and not jump into things we haven't thought through. Everyone wants to reach their goals, but not many are willing to put in the time and work needed to get there. In order to get where you want to go, you must first ask yourself if this is really what you want and if your motivation is sufficient. Epictetus says, Let's say you wanted to win the Olympic Games. That's fine, but make sure you know what you're getting into. What does this kind of desire mean? What should come first? After that, what? What are you going to have to do? Then what else does that mean? Are you really going to benefit from this whole plan? If so, go ahead. You would have to follow a strict schedule that pushes you to your limits in order to get ready for the Olympics if you want to win. You would have to follow strict rules, eat right, Work out hard at set times every day, in hot or cold weather, and stop drinking. You would have to do what your teacher tells you like they were your doctor. You need to think about this before you do anything else. Remember what Coach Taylor said, clear eyes, hearts full, I can't lose. Clear eyes are the first step. You need to be able to see the road well. It is broken in the fastigium dignitatis via est. Seneca would write, It is a rough road that leads to the heights of greatness. Are you ready to go that way? 2. Make it clear. What Marcus Aurelius said, The human soul lowers itself when it lets its actions and urges be aimless, random and unconnected. Everything should be aimed at a purpose, no matter how small. In his writings, Seneca talked about how our aimlessness can stop us from being excellent at anything. He said, our plans fail because they don't have a goal. If a person doesn't know what harbor they're going to, any wind is good wind. You can't just say you want to be healthy or get in shape this year. You need to do more than just say you want to run, swim or ride your bike more this year. 
Just saying that you want to get better in the weight room is not enough. We need something real, not just words. James Clear talks about a study that came out in 2001 in the British Journal of Health Psychology and Atomic Habits. The people who took part in the study were randomly put into one of three groups. Their goal was to get more exercise. The people in the control group were only asked to write down when they worked out. The motivation group was asked the same question, but they were also shown a video about why exercise is good for them. The third group heard the same talk, but they were also asked to say what they wanted to achieve and be certain about when and where they would work out. The first thing people in the third group did was write this sentence. I will do at least 20 minutes of vigorous exercise on day at time in place over the next week. The results were interesting because they were pretty much the same between the two groups. 35-38% of people regularly exercised at least once a week. In the third group, 91% of people worked out at least once a week. Implementation purpose, which is what the experts call it, was found to be more important than motivation. Figure out the exact time you want to run a mile in. Make a note of the exact weight you wish to be able to bench press. Set a clear goal for how many MMA training classes you want to attend, how many pounds or inches you want to lose. After that, make a plan for how you will carry it out by writing down when and where you will exercise next. Pick the city you want to reach. Then make a plan for how you're going to get there. 3. Take one small step at a time. I quote Zeno, Well-being is reached by little and little, but it is still no small thing in and of itself. As you aim for the bay, you have something hard that you want to accomplish. Whether you want to start a business, lose weight, finish a creative project, or build a barn, you have a huge job to do. Just thinking about how huge it is, is too much to handle. You can't even imagine finishing it. It's impossible to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's about how not much adds up over time. It was Marcus who said, don't let your imagination be crushed by life as a whole. He said, all you have to do is stick with the situation at hand. Marcus also talks about putting together your life one action at a time, saying that no one can stop you. But this comparison to the road works well, because getting better is a way to go. There is a way to become a great business owner or writer, to that award or raise, the way to get this or that job done. How do you get from one road to another? You take steps to get around, a certain amount of hours or miles each day. To get better at anything, you have to take small steps first, then bigger ones, put one in front of the other. It's okay to not want to, even if you don't think it's making a difference, since it is. You are getting nearer. You will get there in the end, and it will be great. 4. Have faith in the process. It was Marcus Aurelius who said, don't let life as a whole crush your imagination. Stick with what's going on right now. What is known as the trust the process philosophy in sports can be traced back to Nick Saban, the famous coach of Alabama, which has had some of the best college football teams in history. But he got it from Lionel Rosen, a psychology professor at Michigan State. Rosen had a big idea. Sports are hard to understand. It would take too much brain power and motivation to keep track of all the different things that can happen during a season, let alone a game. They really don't, but they think they do as well as too many data, counter moves, unknowns and distractions, there are also too many plays and players. This is so much to think about that it's hard to handle during a long playoff season. But Monty Burke says in his book Saban that Rosen found out that the average football play only lasts seven seconds. Seven seconds is a good amount of time. So Saban tells his players not to think about big things like big games, titles, or the huge lead the other team has. Instead, Saban tells his players to focus on doing the smallest things well, like working hard, finishing a play, or making a conversion on a single drive. 
Saban tells his team, don't even think about getting the SEC title. Take your mind off of the national title. What did you need to do for this drill, this play, or right now? Let's think about what we can do today, the task at hand. Process makes a way in the chaos of sports and in life in general. A way to fix things so they are clear, easy to understand, and not so complicated. What needs to be done, how it works. It doesn't matter what you call it, just know that life is made up of small steps. 5. Physical reminders can help. Marcus Aurelius said, Nothing is as encouraging as when virtues are clearly shown. In ancient times there was a big argument among the Stoics about whether thinkers should have precepts or sayings to help them remember who they are trying to be and what they are trying to do. This seems crazy now. Stoics like Aristo, who lived around the same time as Zeno, thought this was dishonest. When someone is smart and well-trained, they should always know what to do. Some later Stoics, like Seneca, thought this was silly. That's why his letters to Lucilius are full of rules, quotes, and aphorisms. Even though Marcus Aurelius liked Aristo, he seemed to take a similar road to Seneca. He wrote epithets for the self, and many other rules for life. Memos are important. They're not lying. They're good for you. A mantra can help you stay focused. Having a real totem can help you stick to a habit or standard more than just an idea, which is very helpful. They give you something to rest on, like a fence to keep you from falling backwards. 6. Be flexible. The story of Freddie Roach is told by Robert Greene in his book. Before Roach became a famous boxing teacher, Eddie Futch was his coach, and Futch helped Roach become a fighting winner. Not long after, though, Roach had to stop fighting. In the Daily Laws, Green says that Roach instinctively found his way back to the ring because he knew that what he loved wasn't boxing per se, but competitive sports and making plans. By thinking about it this way, he could change his preferences to go in a different direction in fighting. The story of Marcus Aurelius is like this. Marcus did not would like to be emperor. Author Frank McLean called that the essential tragedy of Marcus Aurelius. Marcus really wanted to become a philosopher. He liked to be alone and read a lot. He was sad when he learned that Hadrian had adopted him and would be making him emperor. But, as Green writes about Roach, Marcus quickly learned that he could change how he behaved in the part that was thrust upon him. And just like Roach became one of the best boxing coaches in history, Marcus Aurelius became king of the Stoic philosophers. Robert Green turned it into a law. Change the way you want to do things. Don't set too many strict goals and dreams. It's the law to change. 7. Spend time with people who push you to be your best. Epictetus said, The key is to spend time only with people who make you feel good and bring out your best. People have known for a very long time that the people they spend the most time with can change them. Friendship was given to us by nature to help us be good, not to be bad with. Seneca said, Be with people who will make you a better man. Goethe famously said, Tell me who you party with, and I will tell you who you are. It's a fact that can be seen. The people we spend the most time with shape who we are. That's why we must be so careful about who we let into our life. If you ever feel like you're stuck, not seeing any progress toward your goals, or lacking the motivation to do what you know you can do, take a close look at the people around you. Do they make you feel good about yourself? motivate you to be better? Or do they bother you, hurt you, or bring you down? Are they positive, logical, driven, dependable, and loyal? Or are they hypocritical, fake, stupid, vain, phony, dishonest, or hypocritical? If you live with a limp man, you will learn how to limp, was an old saying. But living with a limp man can help you in more ways than one. Epictetus was famous for being lame because he had a leg disabled while he was a slave.
Marcus Aurelius read Epictetus's works for a very long time. He wasn't weak afterward. Instead, it made him smarter, more robust, quieter, and more caring. He got those things from Epictetus. A slave formed and improved a king. 8. Do something about it. Do what it takes. What Marcus Aurelius said, Why is the cucumber so bitter? Then throw it away. There are thorns in the way. After that, go around them. That is all you need to know, not anything else. Amelia Earhart was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic by herself in 1932. Her adventures by herself are well known. It doesn't matter as much that Earhart had already done the same trip less than five years before. Earhart worked as a social worker because she couldn't make enough money as a female pilot. The phone then rang one day. Being the first woman to fly across the Atlantic would be nice, but she wouldn't get paid or fly the plane. The offer on the other end of the line was pretty rude. You can guess what she said about the deal. Yes, she said, because that's what people who don't believe the odds do. That's how people who are good at something get better at it, whether it's flying or breaking gender norms. They begin in any place. In any case, they don't care if everything is fine or if they're being treated unfairly. They put their pride aside. They are willing to do anything. As long as they can keep going, they know they can make it work once they get going. And they can show those who didn't believe them that they were right, like Earhart did. Epictetus said, A porch and a prison are both places, but one is high and the other is low but you can keep your freedom of choice in either place if you want to. We have to do things we'd rather not do to get where we want to go or where we are going. A lot of the time, our first jobs introduce us to the broom, as Andrew Carnegie famously said. Scrubbing is not a bad thing to do. It's just one more chance to do well and learn. Take advantage of the chance, each and every one, one of them. Show those who aren't sure they're right.